Welcome to Robert Pears Photography. This is Robert Pears. In this lesson, we are going to talk about which lens should I use. This is a question I get asked a lot of times. And so we'll go through the different types of lenses and explain which lens is appropriate for the different situations you may face. So in this lesson, we'll go through the different types of lenses. We'll go through the characteristics and properties that the different lenses bring to the table and why they make a valuable addition to your toolkit and enable you to more effectively and creatively capture the images and messages that you're desiring to do so. So the goal of this lesson is to explain the different types of lenses, give you an understanding of those lenses with the expectation that once you understand, uh, you'll be able to pick the right lenses to have in your toolkit to allow you to be more effective and creative in uh, capturing the images that you want to capture. So let's do a quick overview of the types of lenses that are out there. First, there are the prime lenses. Uh, these have a fixed focal length. Uh, then there's normal lenses, and these lenses allow you to see what you see normally with your eye. We then have wide angle lenses, and these will allow you to see more than the eye can see naturally. And then zoom lenses, which allow you to basically zoom in and get closer, so they allow you to be far off and really get close to an image. Let's start by looking at prime lenses, which, as I explained, have a fixed focal length. Uh, I would encourage you, before you start this lesson, to take the lesson on aperture and focal length so you understand some of the terms that we're going to talk about. Um, the prime lenses uh, basically bring several advantages to the table and one disadvantage or major disadvantage. And that major disadvantage would be that they are fixed. There's no zoom capability, so you can't zoom in and out. So it's less versatile. But what they do bring to the table is typically they are less expensive lenses. They have less uh, glass in them, so they have typically less issues like chromatic aberrations, which is like the purple fringing. And uh, they typically give you very sharp, high-quality images. Um, when I say they're typically less expensive, that's not always the case. Uh, if you look at, for example, a 400 millimeter prime that has an f-stop 2.8, because of that low f-stop, uh, you will pay ten to twelve thousand dollars, but typically on shorter focal lengths like a 24, 28, 35, you are going to pay a lot less and get a very high quality lens. The next on the list is normal lenses. Uh, so what do I mean by a normal lens? Well, these are lenses that allow you to see what your eye sees, based on the type of camera that you're using. And whether it has a crop factor or a full frame sensor will determine which lenses we're talking about. But typically we're talking 35 to about 80, 85 millimeter. So lenses such as a 35 or a 50 or an 80 would be classified as normal. So with a full frame, uh, a full frame does not have a crop factor. So the focal length is what you get. So a 35 is a 35, a 50 is a 50. Um, so the 50, which is really the classical normal lens, you basically see what you see of the human eye. So it allows you to be very creative. You can get uh, with these lenses, you have a very low f-stop. So you can get a great bokeh, great blurring, uh, with just a sharp center of focus say, around the eye, and then just everything beautifully blurring. Um, so great lenses. If you have a lens with a crop factor, depending on that crop factor, um, a 35 millimeter may become closer to a 50 millimeter. So you may have to drop down. Again, I say, for example, it has a 1.6, then a 35 is going to be closer to 50 millimeters. Um, so looking at the camera sensor and which lenses are available, you can determine which falls in the normal range for you. These are beautiful lenses. They give very good performance, sharp images. Um, again, they are typically, so these are prime lenses, so they don't have a, a zoom factor, but they do give you what the eye sees, less chromatic issues, um, usually typically less expensive than a lot of the other lenses, but give you some great, great images. And can allow you to be very, very creative, particularly because of that low f-stop, uh, you can use... Uh, or you can create beautiful bokehs, have a very shallow depth of focus, uh, much like you would get a zoom lens, but get beautiful finishes. No real distortion, as we'll see with other lenses, so they won't get a distortion of perspective with these lenses. Just great lenses overall. Next, I will turn to the wide angle zoom lenses. And so we think of wide angle, we think of a very low f-stop, or sorry, very low focal length. Um, ultra wide angle, 
you're starting to talk in the teens and low teens and wide angle upper teens 20s uh, maybe 30s is a good number now again a lot depends on the type of sensor that you have so a full frame sensor really really allows the wide angles to shine because a 16 millimeter is 16 millimeter with a full frame however with a crop sensor that 16 millimeter may become 20 um, or various other focal lengths because of that crop factor however wide, uh, wide angle lenses really allow you to see more than the human eye uh, if you look at the ultra wide you look through the camera all of a sudden you can see um, so much more and these are great for landscapes they're great for um, action shots you can get very close to a person and really for example we do this in first dance we go right in close and just gives you beautiful action shots one thing to be aware of these lenses do distort perspective so something that is far off will appear smaller something that is closer will appear bigger not good lenses for portraits because the nose the chin is going to be enhanced and things further away are going to be made smaller uh, but overall this is a great lens to have in your toolkit there's so much you can do uh, be aware of some other things they will give a a distortion of barrel effect on the edge where things start to curve upwards um, you can not make a lot of corrections for that these days in software and if for example uh, you use some of these lenses outside you want to have an f-stop of a eight or higher to stop been getting because particularly with the full frame you'll start to see that darkening around the edges you can make a correction for this in software if you take a picture in raw uh, but again I, I strongly recommend for landscapes for a lot of creativity you can go and close and do some very cute angles and get some extraordinary pictures uh, with these lenses next we're going to talk about telephoto zoom a lot of time people think of zoom as being lenses that really get you uh, a very large focal length that's actually a telephoto lens a zoom is a lens that allows you to zoom between different focal lengths uh, so you can have a wide angle zoom lens telephoto has a larger focal length and these are great lenses um, that allow you to be far off yet get very close to the subject great for wildlife great for sports photography uh, I find in wedding photography allow you to really get far off and get a very intimate shot uh, you can allow the couple to get distracted and unaware of you and you can get some great shots really close in they are um, great lenses to have in your toolkit however certain things to be aware of number one uh, again I encourage you to go back and listen to the lesson on aperture and focal length to understand this better they do allow less light through and we talk about that f-stop because of the large length of the focal length uh, the actual opening is much bigger and if you remember the bigger the opening the shallower the depth of focus so these have a very large opening even at a low f-stop so typically you'll find that you'll want to have the f-stop uh, pretty low so when we're, we're taking pictures we're um, not gonna have that f-stop very high it's probably 4.5 5.6 and such like uh, otherwise we just simply don't allow enough light through these lenses typically um, are a little more expensive particularly if you want a low f-stop so if you're going to use these in low light you want that low f-stop if you're going to take sports photographs at night you're going to want a low f-stop and that's where you're going to start to pay the bigger bucks uh, there are some great 200 millimeter uh, that come in at 2.8 and 2.8 is great for low light so doing sports at nighttime or doing intimate shots in a wedding in a reception hall where it's dark you start to look at a 400 millimeter uh, and such like you're gonna start paying a lot more money for that uh, we have picked two lenses here that I really like the 70 to 300 and the 70 to 200 these are great ranges and allow you to get some good close-ups um, 400 millimeter is another great lens you start to get above 400 you start to pay us at a lot more money uh, if you have a crop factor lens uh, this is where you start to see the benefit because you take this focal length and you multiply it by the crop factor so 300 can become a 400 or etc where the full frame it is what it is again these lenses um, will create a nice bokeh so as you zoom in uh, you get a nice bokeh around the subject and again it's a beautiful finish um, strongly recommend these lenses for creativity and allow you to uh, as I said stand far off and get a very intimate shot 
So let's look at uh, which lenses should we use in different circumstances. And here I picked on weddings, but I can also add some other situations. So if we're doing a wedding inside where you have less light available, um, if it's inside a church hall and there's still some daylight coming in, so it's not really low light, but it is low light. There are several lenses we recommend. Uh, you can use the 40 to 70 millimeter, which is going to give you a normal range. It is a zoom, but it does give you normal range. Good lens. Uh, 70 to 200 millimeter, because of the low f-stop on those lenses. Again, if you get one with a 2.8, uh, you can get in pretty close and get some nice, clean, sharp images. A ultra wide angle. Uh, this is going to give you a, a beautiful uh, view of the whole place and also be very creative if you can get in close and, and just get uh, so much into that picture uh, and get a beautiful picture, as I said. They typically have lower f-stops, can be used in low light situations. We typically use the 16 to 35, which has an f-stop of 2.8. Uh, the 17 to 40 has an f-stop of 4. Not as good in lower light, but good in these situations. Um, if you said you have some nice light, extra light coming in, so it's not super low light, you can also use lenses that have an f-stop of 4.5 to 5.6, such as the 70 to 300 or the 24 to 105. You may have to up the ISO a little bit, but again, these lenses will typically work and allow you to get a little closer with that 300 millimeter and get some nice, uh, very intimate shots. In sports, um, Inside, again, I recommend anything with a low f-stop, the 7200 millimeter, because you need to keep a high shutter speed. So uh, if the f-stop starts to get above 4, you're going to start to suffer. So something with an f-stop below, um, below 4, typically 4 or below, uh, will work really good. With sports, you want to get closer, so you do want some zoom on there. And again, you're going to start to pay a lot more money in those situations. Inside uh, our night without flash, this is where you're really starting to see the low light. Uh, we typically use the 40 to 70 millimeter, the 70 to 200, 16 to 35. Ones that have a low f-stop that allow us, uh, this is a typically in a wedding, to get some very creative shots but operate great in low light. Um, you can also use a lot of the primes because again they have a lot of uh, low f-stops which is great, 1.4, 1.8, which we want in low light. The bigger lenses or the bigger zooms, um, unless you have one with a 2.8, in low light, it really starts to create issues and you're going to get blurring. Again, in sports, uh, if you're doing a night sports, you'll be restricted that you can't use flash. Here, you want something with a 2.8. Um, you may get away with a 4, so the 400 millimeter with a 4 f-stop will work. Um, but anything greater than a 4 simply will not work. So inside, with some daylight... Um, with or without flash if again this is where I've talked earlier um, if there is enough light you can actually expand and use lenses that have an f-stop of 4.5 to about 5.6 that's about as high as you really want to go but it's a low light just not super low light outside obviously this is a place where you have enough light uh, particularly if it's bright and sunny to use all lenses um, and really get creative a term that you will hear often is a fast lens. So what is a fast lens? You know, we often, often think about that as, well, it's going to take a picture, it's going to zoom, focus real fast. That's not what it means. It means a lens with a very low aperture, or f-stop. So it has an f-stop of 2.8 or lower. And the lower, the faster the lens. Um, these lenses allow a lot of light in. Uh, they can be great for bokeh because that bokeh, when I term a bokeh, I mean by that blurring, that beautiful blurring that occurs uh, and the parts that are out of focus. So you get a nice uh, sharp depth of focus in a certain area and then the beautiful bokeh uh, and the rest of it. These lenses typically will focus faster because they allow so much lighting which allows the camera to focus very quickly. So they are great lenses for low light. Uh, they are great lenses for uh, creating bokeh and being very very creative. So I wanted to go through our top lenses particularly the ones we use at a wedding uh, or a special event. And the number one lens is the 40 to 70 millimeter. Uh, this is because it really gives us the normal range. And so you get images that are typically what you see with the eye, and people like that. It has a low f-stop, so I can use it in low light, and it performs really well in bright sunlight. So across the board, it's just a great lens. So a lens that gives you the normal range is highly recommended with a low f-stop.
The next is our 7200 millimeter. This allows us to get in nice and close, get those intimate shots. Again, it has a nice low f-stop at 2.8, so we can use it across the board, outside, inside. Um, the one drawback is outside 200 millimeters really is not as, as, as high as I like to go in, and again, doesn't get you as close as you want, um, and so we have other lenses for that. The next would be our 16 to 35 millimeter uh, wide angle, ultra wide angle. This is a great, it really captures great landscapes. But if you go in close, you can get um, the person just gets so much in, so close. Great action shots, great creativity with this thing. And because of the low f stop, it can be used across the board. It has an f stop of 2.8. I encourage you to get a wide angle. Again, if you can get one with a low f stop, it really allows you to use it across the board. Uh, we then have the 17 to 40 millimeter. Uh, wide angle. This is an f-stop of 4 and we find that in really low light it will start to struggle. Um, it's not as sharp or as clean as the 16, point, the, the 16 to 35 but still a very very good lens. Uh, we then have a 100 millimeter lens and I use this a lot because it's great for macro work. It can allow you to get as close as 6 inches to the subject and just gives you great macro photography, uh, that close-up photography. Beautiful, very sharp, clean images has a low f-stop so it can be used uh, in low light and challenging situations. Uh, we then have our 24 to 105. This is really a standard lens. The f-stop is 4.5 to 5.6. So as you change the focal length, that uh, f-stop varies and increases as you increase the focal length. Makes it a little more uh, unusable in low light and particularly in very, very low light. But great outside, great in good sunlight. Uh, finally, I recommend a prime lens or a normal lens. A uh, good normal lens um, really allows you to get some very sharp, clean images and allows you to be creative. So you could, for example, take a picture of the bride and really blur out the groom in the background and do some creative shots like that. Um, if you're outside, you will need to add some kind of neutral density or ND filter just to darken things down because obviously being so open, it's going to allow a lot of light in. But these are just some of the recommendations we make uh, in terms of lenses. And again, lenses sim similar to this will work great. Okay, so here I'm looking strictly at weddings. And the main three lenses that uh, we must have, these are the critical lenses um, that will work for ceremonies, reception, outside. So across the board for all the images that we're going to use. So a typical wedding, the ones that we recommend, typical ones that we use are the 40 to the 70 millimeter. Uh, or you could have a normal lens, so if you had a 50 millimeter, a lot of uh, wedding kits have a 50 millimeter or something in the normal range. You really want something with a normal range that has a low f-stop. Next up is a 70 to 200 millimeter. This allows us to get in really close, and because of the 2.8, we can use it across the board in all these situations and just get those intimate moments. You can stand off, for example, in a reception hall and just be able to focus in on a couple or a group that's simply not even aware that you're taking the picture and just capture uh, awesome moments. The next is a wide angle. I like wide angles a lot. They really allow me to be very creative. And the 16 to 35 millimeter with the low f-stop really allows us to just uh, get great shots in all situations. Here I'm going to look at lenses we use at a wedding in different particular situations. This would apply to specialty events as well. Just to give you some ideas and thoughts and then you can expand this to situations you may face. So let's start with portraiture where we're looking at taking images and pictures of people then the classic lenses that I recommend would be a 40 to 70 millimeter uh, something that really gives you uh, a normal range you could use a 50 or an 85 or a 35 millimeter prime lens again any lens that's in a normal range uh, so that you can get an, uh, these classical shots a 70 to 200 millimeter will allow you to get in close so you can be far off and what's really nice about a zoom lens a telephoto zoom lens in these situations is by giving that space between you and the subject you allow them to become unaware of you and start just being them and so you can capture great moments if these all have low f-stops you can use these in both inside and outside inside and low light outside that low f-stop will allow you to be creative in uh, using uh, low aperture to get a nice bokeh. But again, remember you'll need a neutral density filter on there to reduce some of the light. So if we then move outside, uh, sorry, yeah, make sure we get this right. So then we're starting to move um, outside. 
you want to have a great range of lenses and I encourage you to have a wide angle such as a 16 to 35 millimeter this allows you to get in close yet get the broad image so you can get great landscapes the 7200 millimeter uh, or 7300 millimeter or even the 100 to 400 millimeter allow you to really zoom in and get some great intimate moments uh, being outside you're not as worried about the f-stop but having a low f-stop will allow you to do some great bokeh shots uh, next we're moving inside and here you want lenses with a good low f-stop because of the potential for a low light and so the 40 70 millimeter becomes a big plus the uh, 70 to 200 millimeter with a low f-stop or lenses with low f-stops uh, again become critical the wide angle because for example first dance great for just going in close and getting some awesome moments and so I encourage that uh, next for fine art images uh, images where we want to use the background and place the subject in a key place strategically so that the background really complements the image and we then allow them to start we, we semi pose them but then allow them to start being themselves ultra wide angles are great um, 70 200 millimeters zoom in and a 40 to 70 or something in a normal range again things that have a low f-stop in case we're doing this inside uh, but it, that work great outside uh, really become great lenses for this a little more on which lenses again I'm picking out a wedding and giving some because weddings are the most some of the most challenging situations wedding or specialty uh, events because of the challenges with light where you're going from a bright outside to inside where it can be lower light to receptionals that are very low light so if you get an understanding of the lenses and why I'm using them you can begin to apply that logic to various other situations so preparation time typically is inside and so it's lower light I wouldn't class it as low light or very low light but it's definitely lower light so again I recommend something that has a good f-stop um, the 40 70 millimeter or something in the normal range works great a hundred millimeter for macro shots because we want to take pictures of the rings and other close-up the flowers etc uh, 70 200 millimeter again just so we can get in close and get some intimate shots and get them when they're not even aware that we're taking a picture and wide angles wide angles are great you can take pictures of the reception all you can get in close and get some very creative shots moving on to the ceremony depending on the restrictions ceremonies and depending on the facility churches typically have windows they have a little more light but are still low light uh, if they do it in reception all then you're in very low light you really need a low f-stop a 2.8 or lower if there are some natural light and so it's not as dark then you can do um, I wouldn't go any higher than a 5.6 and if you can get four lower fantastic again and something in a normal range the 40 to 70 or I said a 50 and 85 millimeter prime works great uh, the 7200 allows us to get in nice and close a wide angle and if you have uh, a decent enough amount of light you can use something such as the 70 to 300 with an f-stop that goes up to 5.6 outside well obviously everything's on the table and for weddings we like a wide angle just to get really broad shots uh, get in close and just get so much in it uh, this should say 70 to 200 millimeter so I apologize for the typo uh, that's a great lens I love that Canon lens very sharp fast great just focuses really well the 7300 uh, or the 100 to 400 allows us to do those intimate shots something else in a normal range is highly recommended because of the creativity and uh, just what they capture finally the reception hall where we have low light and this is where we become challenged and the f-stop becomes critical something of 2.8 or lower uh, something in a normal range something wide angle some kind of zoom and a macro lens is what I recommend so looking at some other scenarios and which lens I'd recommend uh, so if it's in daylight and you're doing sports uh, you want that zoom you want to be able to get in as close as possible so the bigger the zoom the better um, if you have a sensor that's full frame you really want to get that focal length as high as possible if you have a low f-stop you can add a teleconverter and and multiply that um, and those those adapters are great but again if you have a higher f-stop it's going to either multiply the f-stop uh, by one stop or two stops and that sometimes can be just too much with sports because with a sport you want to keep that shutter speed uh, at least one over five hundredth of a second if not one over one thousandth of a second again you want the zoom you want to be able to get in close 
uh, sports night time. This is where you want as great as a, a focal length as possible, but you want an f-stop as low as possible. And I would encourage a 2.8. Uh, for example, if you do football at nighttime, they obviously have the, those floodlights on. Uh, you may get, get away with something of a 4, f-stop of 4, uh, but I would definitely not go any higher than a 4 just to try and capture that um, shutter speed to get a sharp enough image without blurring. Wildlife, typically again outside, and hopefully you have a good lighting situation. You want that focal length to be as high as possible so you can be as far away and get in close so you're not distracting them to capture them doing uh, what they do naturally, just, just being themselves. So, Or a good macro lens. Um, so if you want to take close-ups of flowers or get in close uh, and see a bee on a flower, etc., a good macro lens that allows you to get in close, such as the 100 millimeter, that allows you to get as close as six inches. Landscapes, ultra wide angles are great. Um, a tilt shift lens may come in here because a tilt shift allows you to correct for the barrel effect where that curving that occurs at the edges. Um, I also sometimes use telephoto zoom because I want to zoom in, for example, in the mountains or a certain area, and it gives me just a different perspective on it. Portraits. Um, the normal lenses work great, so something in a normal range works great. Uh, I avoid uh, wide angles, particularly ultra wide, because of the distortion they will do, increasing things close up and making things that look further away smaller. I will also use some telephoto zoom lenses because it allows me to get an intimate shot to really step away and let them be themselves by creating that space. Product shots, uh, here I use macro lenses um, or something like a 40 to 70. It also has the ability to do some macro, not as close as, for example, the 100 millimeter, but still works great. Uh, or the 24 to 105, again, depending what I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, if you have a smartphone, I strongly encourage you to get a depth of field um, app, such as the one here, the depth of, field, depth of field master, which allows you to pick the type of um, camera that you're using, uh, the lens, the f-stop, and it, then basically um, what, how far away before things start to become in focus. And here you see here um, the range that will be in focus. You'll also see here the total depth of field, um, so you can see how much, based on the settings you have, will be in focus. This is great for videography. It's also great for photography. There's also the hyperfocal distance. And the hyperfocal distance really tells you, what, if you get the settings right, from where, um, from that point on, everything will be in focus to infinity. So again, a great tool to have um, and strongly recommend it. A quick word on changing lenses. I encourage you when you change lenses, uh, lenses obviously turn them upside down. Uh, hopefully you're aware there's a little button to press and you turn it anti-clockwise. Um, then when you're putting new lens on, you want to line up the orange, the orange, the ready dots and turn it clockwise. Uh, but keeping it upside down and trying to keep that time where the sensor is open to a minimal because dust will get in. And the greatest problem with um, digital SLRs is dust. I spend so much time trying to clean and keep dust out of there. If you don't have a dust cleaning kit, even if it's just a little bulb to blow dust off, uh, I strongly recommend you get that. If you don't want to touch the sensor, get one of those little bulbs that allow you to blow air in um, without hurting or touching the sensor and get the dust off because it becomes such a problem. Uh, make sure that you put um, a cap on the lens and uh, both ends of the lens when you remove the lens so it doesn't get damaged and in ensure that the lens is set to autofocus. It's very easy to bang it and turn it into manual mode, uh, in which case you're just not going to get images. So make sure that it is in autofocus um, and that it's on correctly. Something that I mentioned earlier that I want to bring up and touch on is the types of sensor because the type of sensor will impact the type of lenses you can use. A full frame sensor uh, which means that the focal length, and this is again all based on a 35 millimeter. If you go back to the film days of the 35 millimeter, um, a full frame means that you will see, so at a 50 millimeter lens, uh, a focal length of 50 millimeters, you see 50 millimeters. Um, but a cropped sensor, which such as an APS-C sensor, has a crop factor, and it'll tell you the crop factor, um, depending what it is, whether it's 1.3, 1.6, that focal length needs to be multiplied by that crop factor. Uh, 
so you're not seeing the full sensor. If you get a lens that is not designed for a full frame and you put it on, you're going to get vignetting. It just will not work as well, and some lenses won't even go on. So you cannot use, for example, with Canon on a full frame, you cannot use an EFS. EFS are designed only for the APS-C lenses, or the cropped lenses. Uh, with the Canon ones, you can use EF or L lenses on all cameras, uh, and especially full frame. So... Again, watch uh, when you're buying lenses that the lens is suitable for the camera that you're buying and be aware um, of the issues with the sensor types. Now, we try to use a lot of L lenses because of the quality. They just bring superior quality, but often because of the cost, we may have to just go with an EF. But typically because of weddings, we, we typically just buy L lenses because they are much higher in quality. But if you're not looking for super high quality um, of an image that, for example, stock picture that we're going to sell, and you're not doing that, you just need a general portrait of your kid playing soccer or something like that, then the EF or EFS lenses will work really, really well. Well, I hope this lesson has given you a good understanding of the type of lenses out there, uh, giving you some ideas of the type of lenses that you want in your toolkit and which lenses to use when. And particularly if you're working with us on a wedding photography, hopefully now you know why we use the lenses that we use and you'll know which lenses to immediately grab in the different situations. If you have further questions, feel free to contact us. And um, again, I encourage you to take some of our other lessons to get a better understanding of the different aspects of photography. Thank you and have a wonderful day.